Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be finding the inverse of a function. f of x equals ln x minus x, and we're going to be finding f inverse of x. That negative one power does not mean it's the reciprocal of the function, but rather the inverse function. How do you find the inverse of f? How do you find the inverse of a function in general? So first of all, we are going to replace f of x with y because x is the independent variable, y is the dependent variable. So let's go ahead and write this as y equals ln x minus x. And then our goal from here is to solve for x. So let's go ahead and put all the x terms on the left hand side because for most people it's easier that way. So we can kind of write it as ln x minus x equals y. And you probably know why. From here, we need to solve for x. And what happens when we solve for x? Since y is equal to f of x, from here, by inverting, we get x equals f inverse of y. Make sense? So the input and the output switch places. And that's when you get the inverse image or, in general, the inverse function. All right, so we're going to take it from here, ln x minus x equals y. And again, our goal is to solve for x. When we solve for x, we're going to be finding x equals f inverse of y. But since we do need f inverse in terms of x, we're just going to switch the variables. And you can always do that, OK? How do you, I think that's probably the million dollar question, how do you solve for x from here? Before I show you how to do that, Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of f of x and its inverse. Here we go. Ta-da. Which one is f? Which one is f inverse? That's for you to find out. Okay? But don't they look amazing? And if you draw the diagonal y equals x, you're going to realize that we have a symmetry. But wait a minute. Can we easily find the inverse of this function? How can you graph it without knowing the inverse? That's a secret I want you to think about. If you can't figure it out, let us know in the comment section and I'll show you a nice way of graphing a function and its inverse. Anyway, so let's take it from here. We have ln x minus x equals y. Let's copy that. From here, our goal is to solve for x, right? So here's what we're going to do. If you try to solve this algebraically, you're not going to be able to solve it because this is a very non-standard equation. Look at that. We have the ln, we have the x, and you can't really extract the x from here unless you use superpowers, some special powers. What are they? I'll tell you about it. But before that, if you had something like this, you couldn't easily solve it. If we had like x squared minus x equals y, you know from here we could solve for x by turning the left hand side to a perfect square and then completing the square because this is quadratic and let's take the square roots. Obviously, we're going to have more than one inverse. And don't you think we're going to have the same scenario here? Because if you apply the vertical line test, this is going to fail. Obviously, the second one is not going to fail the test because it's kind of invertible, sort of. Anyways, but still, you can determine two different intervals uh, and kind of split it up into two pieces so that the function will be invertible. And we do the same thing with another function, which I'm not going to name right now because I'm going to use it. Okay? Cool, cool. Let's pick it up from here. So we have ln x minus x equals y. How do we solve for x? And the answer is Euler's exponential function number, whatever you want to call it. In other words, we're going to use e. How do we use e? We're going to e to the power both sides. So like this, e to the power, uh oh, that wasn't uh, what I was expecting. e to the power ln x minus x equals e to the power y. Now, why does this work? Because if a is equal to b, then e to the a is equal to e to the b. Because e to the x is a well-defined function. Make sense? If the opposite is not always true. If the function isn't one-to-one, -one, then the opposite is not true. So we, where do we go from here? Separate. The exponents are being subtracted, turn it into division. Great. How does this help? 
e to the power ln x is an identity. Remember that. You should never forget it. It's equal to x. Because e to the x and ln x are inverse functions. Uh-oh. We're talking about inverse functions here. And they kind of undo each other. Make sense? So when you have e to the power ln x, e and ln cancel each other out and you end up with x. And when you have ln e to the x, and the ln and the e cancel each other out and you end up with x again. But of course, there are some limitations because e, e to the ln x, x needs to be positive. But here, x doesn't have to be positive. e to the x needs to be positive, but it's always positive, so we're good, right? So they're kind of different. Anyway, so e to the ln x is x to keep a long story short. So we can write it as x divided by e to the x equals e to the y. This is the most important part, right? Uh-oh, did we get stuck? Okay, when you get stuck some with something like this, invoke Lambert. <laughs> yeah, Lambert's W function coming to the rescue. But before that, we need to do something. First of all, let's go ahead and write e to the x, 1 over e to the x as e to the power negative x. So my, here's my goal. My goal is to get something like t e to the t, so that when I apply Lambert's W function, I can get a t as an output. You see? It's also called the product log. It's also called, and that's how Wolfram Alpha interprets it. You can kind of plug in this, and it'll give you t. So it's kind of like the inverse function for e t e to the t, which we don't have an explicit form. Uh, we just have to express it using uh, w. Okay? And I don't know what it, why it's called w, Lambert's L function, not w. I don't know. So let's go ahead and do it. But I don't have a t to the t. What do I have? I have x with negative x. So that, that can be easily fixed. Just attach a negative sign. But before that, let's make some uh, room here. So now we can go ahead and put a minus sign here and I put a minus sign here. And that'll do the trick. Isn't that amazing? So, something so simple will do the trick. And I'll probably have to move this one more time because I'm about to insert w. Okay. If you Lambert both sides with Lambert's W function, then on the left-hand side, you have T e to the T, which is this, by the way. So you're going to get negative X out of that, and that will equal the Lambert's W function of this, or just W of negative e to the power Y. Okay? So far, so good. Now let's go ahead and multiply both sides by negative 1 to get the X by itself. Because getting x by itself is important. That was the goal, remember? Now, we almost got the answer. What is this equal to? This is equal to f inverse of y. So, in other words, f inverse of y is equal to, and just forget about the x and just focus on this, negative w of negative e to the y. Those negatives, by the way, they're not going to undo each other out. They're not going to cancel out, so be careful about that. Since we want to express our solution, as f inverse, uh, let's go ahead and just replace the y secretly. Don't tell anyone because we already used the x for something else. Hey, this is going to work. We can just write f inverse of x as negative w, negative e to the power x. So that will be the inverse function for ln x minus x. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.